Senator from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, this budget represents a choice. It's not an easy choice, but I believe it's the right choice. It's been said by the Senator from Morgan, we live within our means. Nobody likes to do that. All of us want to live beyond our means. And as the Senator, my good friend, senior senator from the 17th suggested, this budget does impose some burdens. Either way we do it, right? Whether we raise taxes or try to live within our means. We could make the argument that we could spend more. We could continue to spend more and it would alleviate the pain and suffering of more people. Where do we stop as a society? We have to control the spending. And we tried to do this in the most compassionate, responsible, reasonable manner possible. We're, I just want to take a moment to contextualize the, the reductions in expenditures from what we had last year. 3.68% across DHHR. That's all. That's a lot. I get it. But it's 3.68%. We're sp still spending over 97% of what we spent last year in an era in which the economy of West Virginia has been reduced because of a federal overregulation and other, other items, other areas. What do you do? What can you do? You have to make the hard choices. Certainly, we could come in and raise more taxes and continue to overspend or dip into the rainy day fund and take from our savings again. That's not the right path, in my opinion. I believe to live within our means is a principle that we talk about. We haven't done things like this in the past. You're right. We're trying to do it a different way. We're trying to pull, and we, we, the senator from Greenbrier aptly says, we don't need to look back. We're looking backwards to see what we've done in the past. Does it work? And I would say to the people of West Virginia, what we've done in the past has not worked. It has not worked. We're last in per capita income. We have the lowest workforce participation rate in America. Highest percentage of people on welfare. And yet, we continue to grow the government. And we've been responsible in here in the past. I agree. We haven't raised many taxes. We raised $100 million in taxes last year. It didn't change anything. What I'm suggesting, or what we are suggesting with this proposal, is to spend every cent of the, general, of the revenue estimate to help the people of West Virginia. And I would suggest, as it relates to DHHR, that the true measure of our compassion is not whether or not we continue to spend and grow government, but, but whether or not we help people off the welfare rolls and onto the ladder of economic success. That's the true measure of compassion. And so, and you know, I think most of you know me and well enough to know that I feel deeply for people. I want to help as many people as we can. And so I want to spend as much as we can in these areas. And that's what this budget does. It spends as much as we have available. And so I would just ask my friends on both sides of the aisle to consider supporting the principle of living within your means and establishing a new standard in West Virginia that that's what we do moving forward so that we can help more people off the welfare rolls, we can provide an economy that is prosperous for the people of West Virginia, that puts people back to work, and allows um, this economy to grow and prosper. And for, so those, for those reasons, I would ask you to support this bill. I would call upon the House of Delegates to support a measure that lives within our means, and I ask the Governor of West Virginia to honor his campaign pledge and sign this budget that lives within our means. Thank you very much.
Senator from Berkeley. Senator Jackson, yield. The Senator, yield. Senator, since I'm trying to get to the bottom of who actually wrote this budget, and they're saying you did it, so since you came to the floor, we can ask you some questions about this budget, if you don't mind. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, first of all, the I'll process. Mind, I'll answer. <laughs> would that would that be okay? To answer some questions yes. on this budget. Yes, please. Because it's my understanding that that you, along with the majority leader, actually wrote this budget. Is that true? No, it's no. not true. Who wrote the budget? Michael Cook wrote this budget, <laughs> but he did it at the direction of the majority caucus. He did it at the direction of the majority caucus, the Republicans. Yes. All the members are just. Some members? Uh, I would say most members. Most members. And um, how long have, has this budget been in existence that it's been formed? I mean, how, how long has the budget actually been there? I know we're voting on it today. It was sprung out a couple of days ago in the Finance Committee, but I'm interested in how long this budget actually existed. Uh, before it was revealed to the public. Yeah, what I would say is, and I can't recall the date, somebody will be able to help me with the date on the press conference that we uh, announced the framework of this budget. In fact, I think the next day you were on the Senate floor questioning us about the details of the budget in which we laid out the various areas upon which we had uh, have to take a look to make some of the reductions. And then from that point forward, we've developed the details, and I think when it was in, presented to you in finance, would have been the probably the first time that it would have been, I don't know, uh, codified. But the, it's not the first time that the Republican caucus saw it, is that correct? Uh, well, I mean, we caucus every day. Yeah, yeah you, every day you saw the budget. We, well, we didn't. I mean, the rest of us did not see it until that day, including the public. Um, my question is, um, you know, I know tradition, uh, some members feel that we ought to throw tradition out the wall, out the door, but... Uh, traditionally, uh, the House takes up the budget, and they've been trying to do that. I just wonder from you <clears throat> why they're not taking the budget up first, why we're taking the budget up, why, they're, why aren't they taking it up first this year? That traditionally has been the case. Do you know why? Well, I'll say uh, this is my first year Senate president. In terms of tradition, uh, you know, it's not a rule. We want to do what we have to do as quickly as we can possibly do it for the good of the people of West Virginia. So. Uh, you know, tradition may be one thing, uh, reality and action and uh, deeds are another. Okay, so, um, so the question would be then, why, why do the Republican caucus, you and the Republican caucus, wait so long to actually now present the budget? I mean, we, we only have three days and ten hours left. I'm just wondering, why, why, why so long? We, we've had, you know, close to 60 days and this has been your press conference for about what three weeks ago or more, maybe a month. Um, just wondering why, why you all waited so long to actually bring this budget down here for discussion. Well, there's a lot of bills that affect the budget, obviously, and there's a lot of discussions that coincide with the budget. And this is, frankly, I believe, faster than when uh, you were majority leader that it was accomplished. Well, I, I'm not sure about that because about this time we would have already passed the budget. And we had probably been Did you ever pass one before the 55th day? Um, I, I don't remember, but the budget was out in public quite a bit, and there were a lot more discussions other than the, Repu other than the caucus, you know, other than a backroom deals being made with, with caucus members. That, I've never heard that done. But the you budget, would concede. All my years, uh, I know it's been out in the public. But you would concede that you had never, as majority leader, passed a budget prior to this time. I, I'm not sure the date. I mean, usually about this week we do. We can look it up. But, but the budget was presented way before and worked on before a couple of days like, like you all presented it on this. I guess the, the question on this is, um, and, and I'm sure you, as you and the caucus put this together, you understand the ramifications of many of these cuts that you're making, uh, particularly on the $47.7 million uh, to DHHR. Do you understand how much federal dollars that we are not going to be bringing in the yes, state of West Virginia? Yes, I'll, I'll take a little leeway to answer the question. Yes, we understand the less than 4% reduction and how it impacts the federal matching grants. We also likewise understand the 96% expenditures and how it affects 
uh, the federal grant programs. And so in total, in total, we're less than 4% reduction. Um, well, that's actually the 47.7 million. The analysis just got back from DHHR, and it says the $47.7 million in the state um, actually is going to uh, cause a reduction in $187.6 million in federal dollars, which is actually $235.3 million in the area that goes into all kinds of things like foster care and so forth. So you all are well aware of that that's, that's the actual cut that's being made is $235.3 million. In, in DHHR, is we that are right? okay. And then I, I know that I notice on since you and I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. I see a lot of cuts going on in the development office, workforce West Virginia. We talked about putting people back to work, but we're cutting there. We're also cutting quite a bit in higher education. And um, and the senator from um, the senior senator from the 15th talks about you know well maybe this will bring them to the table or to their knees to come back and talk about that. Um, but, but before I get to the college, I, I, I want to back up just for a second to the school aid formula. Um, you, you, of course, I know your caucus realized that you're cutting about a 101 million, well, about $102 million from our school aid formula. I mean, you're aware of that. And since 2013, actually, um, that's a total of 177 million dollars from our school aid formula. But you all knew that but going into this in 2013 compared, cutting from 2013 to now, we're cutting school aid formula about $177 million. You, you're, you, you knew that, right? You knew right. that what we were doing? Yeah. You're okay. So also, um, you know, I, it's been well articulated, many of the cuts. Everything articulated here, you, you fully realize what you're doing with your budget. Um, and, and higher education is being cut. I, my question is, I, I didn't know if you knew this, but recently uh, the Winchester Star in my area um, actually had an article on March 28th of 2017, and it was big headlines, and I don't know if you knew this. It says, Governor announces Amazon's e-commerce facility and 1,000 new jobs in Frederick. Frederick, Virginia, which is Winchester right across the border. And, and I don't know if you knew this, but I just want to ask you if you did. The Amazon's vice president of North American operations said the reason why we, we have located in Virginia and not the eastern panhandle, because they, they were looking where Berkeley County is, uh, was that, you know, incredible customers, but then an outstanding workforce in the state. Outstanding workforce. You, were you aware of that article? of the thousand jobs that we lost in the Eastern Panhandle? No, frankly, I wasn't aware of that one, but I, what I am aware of is that there are too many of those type announcements that aren't located in West Virginia, right, right. and that's so, what we're trying to see. So you're fixed. exactly right. You're right, and, and, and it's hurt our people quite a bit. So we're cutting workforce when this says this is why they went to Virginia, and we're cutting our K through 12 by, by that uh, outrageous number, you know, our school A4. And then we're cutting all of our institutions, including Shepherd and Blue Ridge, and you know, you knew this, Mr. President, that Blue Ridge actually was one of the reasons why Procter & Gamble actually located to the Eastern Panhandle for training. You realize that, right? Right. And, okay, so we're cutting them about a million dollars, Blue Ridge, on this and in this training. Um, my, my point is this, and, and I don't know if you knew of this, but I wanted to, uh, to make it aware for you of a letter that was actually addressed, um, and this is from West Virginia University, from the president of West Virginia University. And I want to read this because this goes to why we lost a thousand jobs. One of the reasons why we lost a thousand jobs in Eastern Panhandle. It says, it doesn't go directly to it, but indirectly. Dear friends of West Virginia University, yesterday the Finance Committee of West Virginia Senate distributed a bu budget bill that reduces the appropriations to West Virginia University by 15 percent. In addition, the proposed budget bill makes reductions to other programs such as the Cardiac Project and supports efforts conducted by West Virginia Universities. West Virginia University is the economic engine of our state 
Our leaders should be investing in higher education to ensure a prosperous future for all 1.8 million West Virginians. Our university has already lost nearly 29 million in base reductions compared to 2011. You knew that. You knew that. This additional reduction will be devastating to West Virginia University and all other four-year institutions in the state. Now is the time that West Virginia should be investing in West Virginia universities and not cutting. Let us be clear. Reductions of this magnitude will have a severe negative impact to our institution. It will mean significant layoffs of our staff, increased tuitions of our students, a fundamental change to WVU Extension Service, and the reduction of academic programs. We cannot let this happen. You, did you get this letter? I may have it. But it, listen, it doesn't surprise me that an advocate for more money wants more. I mean, someone who runs an institution wants more money from the state of West Virginia. I completely get that. I get it. So, I mean, are so, you surprised? So you're, you willing, you're willing to own the fact that we're going to have that, that significant layoffs. This is one institution. We're not talking about Shepherd. We're not talking about Blue Ridge. Those are other significant institutions. But each of these higher education institutions will have significant layoffs of increased tuition to our students and fundamental changes that will reduce academic programs and preparing. And it says there, therefore I'm asking you to immediately start calling the Republican members of the West Virginia Senate. Uh, let them know that the proposed budget bill is wrong for West Virginia. West Virginia University is wrong for the state of West Virginia. So I, I just, I guess I want you to, you know what this budget will do, right? Senator, if I may, you can read every letter that every person that was affected by 3% or a 4% reduction in this budget can write. It doesn't change the revenue estimate. The fact is, we have a certain amount of money to spend. I love to spend money on universities and DHHR and every other program in the state of West Virginia. I wish we could do more. But for too long, we have spent more than we have. And so, uh, do you advocate a particular tax that you want to impose so that we can spend more money? I mean, well, I guess you're I, advocating for I, additional I just want to say it's higher, edu higher education is $15 million cut and uh, actually we've cut them in the past. We cut, Who has? Cut you? This, leg this legislative body has Under cut your them leadership. in the past. You've cut we, them. We've cut higher education you, you, in the past. We, you. Well, let me, well, I, me personally. I mean, you. I don't, I don't you, have But you voted for those cuts, right? Absolutely, in budgets, All right. in budgets that have happened. So, well, in, what did you, I'm so sorry, in, I missed that comment. You said as budgets. In past budgets, we've, we reduced higher education over time. Right. right. I and agree. So they're, they're, you know, they, they've, they've reduced themselves. They become more lean and mean and efficient. And yes, they do. I now you absolutely now adopt that premise. Now you're cutting another 15%, right? You know we're cutting another 15% of these folks. Yeah, it's fallen to us during these budget times to make this cut, as it did to you in difficult budget times to make those same cuts. You know, Mr. President, you know this in the sense that, you know, you have to invest to make money. If you take your money and you stick it under your mattress, you're not going to get any interest in it. You're not going to make any money. Each time you take underneath that mattress and you start spending it, you know, you're going to run out. And if we don't start investing in the people of West Virginia, this is why we're in the situation we're in. Well, sir, I mean, my so response is... So I'm just is saying your cuts. Yeah. I understand living within the means, but there's also an yeah. aspect of investing mm -hmm. in our future. But it's a, and to my response, it's a fundamental difference in the view of a capitalistic society. Do you leave the money as much as you can in the hands of the private sector to use that in the most efficient manner possible, or do you gather more of it, as you suggest, and spend it from the government's perspective to say, this is a good investment from the government? Well, we, we've discussed quite a bit on this floor, Mr. Yeah. President, about public-private partnerships, particularly as it comes with infrastructure, and other things, we passed bills here that would allow for public-private partnerships. I think that's the future in the sense of how we move forward. Yes, the private sector is the engine that drives it. There's no question. I'll be and happy to work with We ought to create an environment on that. 
But taking out the public sector of doing a public-private partnership in the sense of that is if we don't invest in that, then we're short-sighted. And I would think you would agree with me in the public-private partnership aspect is a way to move forward. Well, I agree Even with the company you work <clears throat> for yeah. has a lot of, lot of public-private partnership. I, I agree with you that the private sector is the way to generate growth and opportunity. I think, frankly, our question and answer session is probably uh, over with. <laughs> but uh, if you, you have it other would be over with. Yeah. I know that, Mr. President, because I know, I know you're very uncomfortable here because you went out there and you made a press conference saying live within your means. We passed Senate, Senate Bill 609 that basically called you... So, Mr. President, Gen thank you for your time. Thank you. Gentleman from Morgan, state your point. Senators, recognize they ask questions. Senator from Berkeley, confine your comments to questions. Mr. President? Yes, sir. I move the previous question. The previous question has been moved. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the previous question is. Okay. Okay, the previous question is in order. All those in uh, favor will vote yay. All those opposed will vote nay. Doing. Clerk will pay, prepare the machine. Question. Yeah, the previous question has been moved and voted upon. Uh, the question now before the Senate is shall the bill pass? Further discussion? Uh, that previous question has been moved. All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. Clerk will prepare the meeting. Right. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? So the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question there being 20 yays, 14 nays, zero absent and not voting, more than a majority of those present and voting, having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Senator from Ohio. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill be made effective from passage. Senator from Ohio moves the bill be made effective from passage. All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. <laughs> Has every member voted? Has every member voted? Has, if so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question, there will be 20 yeas, 14 nays, zero absent and not voting, less than two-thirds of those elected having voted in the affirmative. I declare the motion rejected. Clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House.